I'm Melissa Case from Hat to Hem, and today I am, once again, doing a very big project in a very short span of time. This seems to be a common theme on my channel, but it's not intentional, it's just what happens. Today I am making my Meg March dress. This is part of our Little Women collaboration with Marie from Historical Bell, Elise from The Well Dressed Historian, and Dixie from Dixie DIY. I feel like I got some Little Women cozy vibes going on today, and I'm not mad about it. Anyway, as you can see, my undergarments are finished. I finished them last night. I do have a chemise, it's just not on the dress form yet. And I wanted to stay relatively nice instead of being crushed under the corset. Anyway, since the undergarments are done, I can finally get to work on the dress, which is good because our videos are due out next week. Now, when I planned this project, and mind you, Marie and I came up with this idea a year and a half ago, there was plenty of time to plan. I had purposely worked in enough space to make this. I even had like a little buffer period of just in case something happened, I would still have enough time. That buffer was not enough because I ended up getting COVID. That had me down for three weeks. And then we went right into Thanksgiving, which has at my in-laws for a very long weekend. We're talking like Wednesday to Sunday, Saturday, Sunday. We were away for a while and it was great, but I still need to get this dress done. So last week I worked on the undergarments and now this week is for the dress and then hopefully I'll have this video edited in time for it to come out with all the other videos. It's tight. But that's okay, I've got this. Probably. You see, like Meg, I have a little one that I take care of. My son is about a year and a half right now and it's a lot of energy. <laughs> Also, I have a lot of family obligations because we are now into December, which means holiday stuff all the time, which I love. It just, there's, there's not enough weeks in December. <laughs> so uh, the scheduling has been interesting, but that's okay because now I have time to make a dress. Kind of. <laughs> so what I need to do this week, and by this week, I mean today and Thursday and maybe Sunday since I have a big work thing tomorrow and then I'm taking my mom and my aunt to Bethlehem over the weekend, I need to get really moving on this. I need to make the skirt and the bodice uh, and also probably a little collar and maybe some cuffs. We'll see on the cuffs, that might not happen. Like I, I probably should at least have a collar. I need to get that done. So I rambled enough, let me show you the fabric. All right, so here is my fabric. And I am so happy with it. I picked this out a year and a half ago when we first started talking about this project. And I was so happy it was still in stock by the time it came time to work on this. So as you can see, it's this nice plaid fabric. It has a cream background and it has green going across it, which I love because I really wanted there to be green in this dress. In the second chapter of Little Women, Meg receives a book from Marmy and the cover is green. And it's just a color that I always associate with her, that and blue, because there is mention of her wearing a little blue bow in her hair at one point later on in the book. And this is where I'm really excited. You can see there is blue in this fabric and it makes me really happy. Anyway, this will be the bulk of the dress. I also have this dark blue fabric. I was hoping to get more of a ocean blue color, like the back of this ribbon, but we take what we get, just like the March sisters. And uh, this is available for anything extra I need. I originally bought it for a bonnet, which I don't think I will be making this week, but I will be making it in the future, so stay tuned for that. I also have this nice velvet ribbon to use as a decoration. Again, the back of the ribbon is probably closer to my color, but I like the velvet, so there we go. And I also have this green ribbon, which again is meant for the bonnet, but it's available if I need it for another purpose. For my pattern, I am altering this truly Victorian pattern. This is TV447. It's an 1863 sheer bodice. Well, at least that's what it says. It has instructions for making the skirt as well. The reason I am using this pattern is because I already had it. Now we did agree that our characters were aiming more towards fall or winter 1867. However, at this point, Meg is a mother. She has twins. She's trying to run a household on a very tight budget. I don't see her making a lot of new clothes for herself at this point, especially since it's such a big deal that she buys 
50 yards of silk fabric. Though, to be fair, even now, 50 yards of silk fabric would cost a lot. Anyway, my idea is that she hasn't had new clothes in a while. She's a little bit behind the times. She's doing her best with what she has. But right now, her mind is more on her family and not on the current fashions. So, that's why we are going with an older dress and also, I had it. Now, as I said, I'm going to have to alter this a bit. Fabric wise is not too bad, but the skirt is not nearly as full for my dress because it's a later year. The trends are different and I feel like even if Meg isn't making a brand new dress, she might be able to either adjust her current crinoline or buy a new one just so it's a little bit smaller. I feel like that's more practical with a household that also involves twins. So I feel like a smaller crinoline might be something she would jump at the opportunity to have. So the skirt will not be this wide. I'm not sure if I'm gonna make the sleeves that full or not, we'll see. But one of the things I have to change is the lining. Cause as you can see, it has a low neckline lining and I'm making my dress uh, have a more full lining. So that will be one of the changes I do. Again, we'll see about the sleeves. That's where we're at. So I have all my bodice pieces cut out except for the sleeves. And I just wanted to show you the difference between this front piece and this lining piece. You see a big part of this bodice is that it's gathered in the front. So the pieces are subtly different. The lining is gonna be fitted so it has these darts. And as you can see, this one has no darts that you can see that size wise they're pretty similar but these darts are going to do a lot of work in bringing this in making it more fitted and then this little extra bit on the end is suddenly going to be a lot more because we're going to be taking away an inch here and here so let's see one two so it's going to be more like that much on the end I just thought that would be a little bit interesting. Another interesting thing is, hang on. So this is the back and the side lining pieces. You see they're gonna overlap here by about, about a half an inch, give or take. So that's gonna take this in a bit. Not as much, the back isn't gonna be as guided as the front. But you can see the actual back piece, no extra pieces at all, it's just one. So again, that's gonna be gathered in a bit. All right, so my next step is to take these lining pieces and cut them out of a lightweight twill. That's gonna serve as my lining, give a little bit of structure to this, and hopefully it looks nice. Do not sew the side seams. Whoops. Oh, it's probably fine. That's really easy to take apart. I'm not too worried. And also the important thing is, I think the lining fits. I might want this part to overlap a little bit more than it is, but it's fine. I can deal with that. It looks like I have a fairly snug fit all around. A little bit of wrinkling here, but that's to be expected because uh, this part is going to need to fold up a bit and that should help and so would some boning along here yeah i have a lining now because of the nature of the original pattern there's a lot of steps involved here that i don't necessarily think are relevant to me so i'm probably just going to skip them actually i think i'm just gonna go rogue i'm just going to put this together in a way that feels right which will probably be wrong but it's fine probably fine it's probably fine all right well I'm repeating myself so it's probably a good sign to stop talking and get a move on with the next step I think the next thing I'm going to do is at least cut out the fashion fabric for the bodice 
I can always adjust the skirt a little bit if I don't have enough fabric, but it's a little bit hard to adjust the bodice, so let's get on that. Best part about sewing with a checked fabric? It is so easy to just press on a straight line. So it turns out I can overlap these two flaps, which is a relief. I have to pull the lining a bit more tightly, which I can't really do with one hand since I'm holding the camera with my other hand, but it is possible and it gives it a very tight fit, which is what I want. So that's a success. Right here is one of the front panels. Now the center front has been folded under a half inch and then a full inch. And I think that's actually gonna look kind of nice because once I put that over this folded edge, it's going to give this front some stability, which is good because I'm gonna have buttons down the front. So I'm very pleased with that. So that's where I am right now. I'm going to sew the gathering stitches along the bottom and I'm going to also do that to the back. And then I guess I might attach the shoulders up here. We'll see. I am going to unpick this side seam because I want both layers to be in that seam so that they're all held together nice and tightly. And let's see. I'm debating on if I'm going to turn this lining inside out so I have access to my seams or not. <laughs> Uh, I'm in debate mode right now. I'm not really sure which direction I want to go with that, but you know, but one step at a time and hopefully by the time I get to it, I know what I want to do. This is where I have to stop tonight, but I really like how this looks. It's pretty simple. Uh, there's just, just a little bit of gathering detail here, but I feel like that's pretty appropriate for Meg, at least at this stage of her life. So I'm very happy with how this is looking. Well, the good news is I have all the skirt panels cut out. The bad news is that just happened from up there. So there's glass there, it's on the hem of my dress, it's back there, and I need to clean this up because, you know, broken glass. And uh, I was already thinking I was running out of energy, so I need to pretty much stop working for the night. We are leaving at 2.30 tomorrow, and we won't be back until Sunday at some point, probably evening, if I'm going to be honest. I have to take my son to story time at the library tomorrow. He's not taking a nap before we leave, so... Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to get any sewing done tomorrow. Well, I guess we'll see. When we got back from the Lehigh Valley, I had enough energy to cut out the pockets, and that was pretty much it. For the record, the rest of this video was filmed across two days. I searched the edge of the pockets. The skirt panels themselves were the full width of the fabric, so they didn't need to be finished off the way the pockets needed to be. The pocket pieces were attached to the front and side panels, and the panels were sewn together. I pressed all of my seams. Even though I was in a rush and didn't film each step, all of my seams were pressed flat, then open, then from the front. Pressing is so important to the quality of your garment, and it's always worth taking the time to make sure you press your seams. I finished off the neckline with bias tape, which was pressed to the inside and secured by hand. Alright, so I was working on the skirt, but I just switched gears and now I'm working on the bodice again. And the reason I'm doing that is because it is Monday, and these videos had to go up on Thursday and this dress is not done yet. So I'm thinking I'm going to have to change some elements of my design in order to just get this done so I have something to post. Simplifying the design feels 
pretty Meg-like, so I'm not mad about it. Of course, if I do have to cut some things, yeah, it's a little sad because I like things to, you know, look nice. But it will still look nice even if the skirt has no trim on it. So I'm not going to sweat it at all. Right now, I am finishing off the neckline. You see right here, I am finishing it off with some bias tape, which I am hand stitching down. After this, I might start on some buttonholes. Um, we shall see. I think I need to try this on with the skirt and the undergarments just to make sure that everything is gonna be laying correctly. And honestly, trying this whole thing on is a little bit of a process. <laughs> but it's all right, gotta do it because, you know, the, the only thing that's more important of just getting it done is making sure it actually fits me. I also need to hem the skirt and attach it to a waistband. I want to do like a little bit of a collar. I did buy lace at Joann's when I was buying buttons yesterday. And I'm hoping it'll look all right. It's um, supposed to kind of look like crochet. And uh, I don't know if it's going to be accurate, but I think it has a bit of a look I'm going for because in the book, Meg laments about how they don't have real lace. So uh, I'm guessing that that means that they had something else like crochet or something. So I'm hoping that I will be able to make a little collar out of that. I'm also thinking about making some kind of like almost like a belt around the waist maybe. In a perfect world this outfit will be finished sometime tomorrow. I will spend the night editing. I'll shoot the final shots on Wednesday, finish editing, and hopefully it'll be up on Thursday. That's a lot of stuff in a short amount of time, but what choice do I have? <laughs> I don't have one. I don't have a choice. My sisters are relying on me. I need to get this done, so we're getting it done. Okay, I think I came up with a time-saving idea that will preserve part of my plan for this dress but also justified because i'll be getting down a little bit more quickly ish kind of all right here's the plan okay so this hem is going to have to be folded up about four and a half inches now i would have to do this entire hem by hand right but my idea is if i put my contrast fabric so that the bottom here lines up with those four inches i'll be able to attach it here by machine fold it up and then I'd only have to do the top part by hand, which I would have to do anyway if I was just doing the one section. Does that make sense? I think it makes sense. I mean, it'll, I'll still have to do the amount of time it'll take to cut this and uh, stitch on the bottom by machine, but it's still not that bad as doing like three different hems. I was concerned about having trim for the top, but I don't think it's going to matter too much. I think that if I just have it on there plainly without any kind of trim on top of the bottom, I think it'll be fine. I don't think it'll be the end of the world. So I think that is what I'm going to do. Uh, as of right now, the skirt panels are still all flat because I felt like it'll be easier to do this section flat than if it's already pleated up in the waistband. And uh, yeah, that's where I'm at. So it doesn't matter how many times I need to make continuous bias tape, I never remember the formula. I have it written down somewhere, but <laughs> lately uh, I end up having to just watch my own video on how to make continuous bias tape. You would think I would just know the formula off the top of my head since I literally made a video about it, but apparently that's not the case. So yeah, that's where we're at today. <laughs> So this might be a fun fact for you, the viewer, but it's not a fun fact for me, the person who has to try and make a dress in two days. This is my third time trying to get this seam sewn. No, I'm, I'm lying, this is the fourth time. The fourth time. Because I want these st little stripes on the plaid to line up as much as I can. It, it, it just wasn't working. Like at one point I was accidentally like crossing over into a different line and uh, then everything was crooked it just it wasn't working so i finally just took my 
fabric over to my ironing board and I pressed a seam into the line that I'm supposed to be following and so far that seems to be what's really working. So uh, yeah, that's been, um, it's been a fun time here with me and my seam ripper. But I'm on my way now and hopefully I'll at least have this strip cut out by the time I need to pick my son up from my parents. I just wanted to point out this chalk line because look how it matched up. Oh, that's so satisfying. Look how perfect that is. Oh my goodness. I have to say that was luck. Uh, that was absolute luck because I did not do any special measuring for this. It just aligned perfectly and whew, I'm relieved. Now it's a little early to say for sure, but I am very glad that I put this band on here. I think it just elevates the skirt a little bit. Hopefully it doesn't affect the way it drapes too badly, but honestly, I'm just really happy with it. And you can kind of see, I did decide to top stitch the top of the band but I don't think you can tell from further away so I think that was the right choice yeah I'm happy so let's get this onto the waistband so this is about mm, 170 something inches gathered up into whatever my waist measurement is 32 I think and you can see it barely fits. Like that's gathered as tight as it can be. So once again, it kind of just worked out. All right, let's get this attached. I am uh, doing this whole thing by machine. I am not going through and sewing this part of the waistband down by hand. I am tired. It's after two in the morning. I want to go to bed, but I'm not going to bed until this is done. So we're doing this the fast way and it will be fine. Sanity is more important than historical accuracy. All right, so the skirt is done. Now, I did goof a little bit here. You see, I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be flipped <laughs> so that this is the uh, inside of the waistband and this part's the outside, but oh well. I'm going to chalk that up to doing this at two in the morning and not worry about it. You can see this kind of leads into a little pocket and this side is also a pocket. Will I need a pocket while I'm in this dress? I don't know. <laughs> Probably not because I'm not going to an event, but you know, I figure better safe than sorry. And at this point, I'm just so used to putting pockets in my big historical dresses that I just kind of did it out of habit. See, my uh, phone is pretty massive and it should fit in here pretty easily. Trying to do this while holding the camera is not easy. Hang on, there we go. Can't even tell it's there. All right, so tomorrow I'm working on the bodice. As you can see, it looks a little frumpy, but that's okay. Uh, hopefully it'll look a little bit better once there's boning in there and the waistband is finished and there's sleeves and a collar and buttons and all that. I just pretty much told you what my entire to-do list is for tomorrow, but yeah, good stuff. All right. Four in the morning, going to bed. How did I get from 2 a.m. to 4 a.m.? I have no idea. <laughs> uh, because it definitely didn't take that long to do that waistband. So, um, yeah, bed. So these are the buttons I found for this particular project. Are they historically accurate? Almost certainly not, but that's okay. 
I like that they are blue. I like it'll be a little bit of a contrast on here. So we're going with them. I have 12 buttons total. I want to save two just in case I need them for the cuffs. So I'm going to have 10 buttons on this bodice. Which feels like a lot, but I think it will look nice. I mean, potentially 10. I could do less. I should probably do less, make it easier on myself. We'll see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark where I want my buttonholes. I was originally going to do it by hand. I feel like I should probably just do it by machine. It'll be easier. I'll have to get that machine out, but I think that's all right. All right, hang on. Let me see here. I might be able to get away with doing eight buttons and have it still look like enough. Because it doesn't look like they go too crazy with the buttons on here. Yeah, this one over here only has five buttons. Of course, that is a bit earlier, but yeah, it's fine. Either way, I'm not seeing as many buttons as is typical for the later period. I feel like once you get into the late bustle period, they go a little nuts with the buttons. As it is, seven or eight will probably be fine. So anyway, I'm going to mark my buttonholes first. Since I already have to try everything on in order to make sure the waist is in the right spot, I might as well do the buttonholes now and then mark where the button should be for uh, when I try it on later. Then I can just quickly set the buttons on and everything should be all right. All right, let's do that, I guess. I just want to say that while I was working on this dress, especially over the last two days, I got a little headcanon going that this dress was a family effort. I'd like to think that maybe Amy helped pick out the material and Beth made the collar and maybe Joe helped make the dress itself. And either it was a dress for Meg for her married life or a Christmas gift or something. But I like to think that all of the sisters had a hand in this dress. So yeah, that was just a thought that popped into my head and I wanted to share it with you. Alright, so I tried to add one more button. One more buttonhole. And I didn't put the pin in, and this happened. Ideal? Not even a little bit. Um, I think I'm just going to put a ribbon around my waist and call it a day. That should be enough to cover it. And uh, yeah, that just is what it is. <laughs> but anyway, all I have left are the sleeves and maybe something around the neckline just to make it look like a collar. And then I'm done. And I'll worry about this another day. Or I won't. I'll just keep covering it up and um, be grateful that the rest of it is fine. Alright, dress is done. My hair is all done up. Let's put the dress on.
I can't believe we did it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we've enjoyed making these. This project was a long time coming. It took a lot of planning and honestly, I still can't believe we got it done. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like below so other people can find it. It's not just for my pride. It actually does help other people find these videos. I would love to hear from you in the comments. I do my best to try and respond to everybody. Is there a particular part of this video you enjoyed? Is there a collaboration you would like to see in the future, whether it's a book or a movie or a concept or something? I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much to my patrons on Patreon for making this video possible. That's not just lip service. If not for you, I probably wouldn't have been able to afford the fabric. So thank you. Please be sure to check out the videos of my sisters. I know they really appreciate it. And like I said, we've all worked so hard on this. I would love for you to see what they were working on as well. Now, if you're watching this in real time, hopefully I will have the other videos in the series up soon. I have one about making the chemise and drawers. I have one on the corset. I have one on the uh, hoop skirt and petticoats. I think those are all separate videos. I probably will combine them all, but they're not edited yet. If you're watching this from further on in the future and the videos are out, I hope you enjoyed them all. And if you haven't seen them all, there will be a playlist in my description below. All right, that's all for me. I'll see you next time. Bye.